John Elway retired as a future Hall of Famer and two-time world champion. This one's for John. But it might not have been as a Bronco if not for a dramatic turn of events. A standout at Stanford, Elway was the most coveted player in the 1983 draft. The Colts had the first pick, but Elway made it known he did not want to play in Baltimore. I want to give myself the best chance to be the best quarterback that I could, and I looked at that organization and what they were doing, and I didn't think that that was going to give me the best chance to, to show off my talent. Not show off my talents, but to win a Super Bowl and to win as a football team. The Colts considered several trade offers before draft day, but would only give up the rights to Elway for a fistful of first round picks. He was the best prospect I had ever seen. So if I was going to trade him, it was going to be for the greatest trade in the history of pro football. When no one met the asking price, the Colts took Elway. Baltimore selects quarterback John Elway of Stanford. But that didn't mean their ownership would keep him. I went down and picked him. When I came back up, they couldn't see me, but I could hear them. They were already talking about, look, we'll just leave here and go do what we want to do. And I, so I knew it was going to be difficult to keep them from trading. Within days of the draft, Dan Reeves heard from Broncos owner Edgar Kaiser that the asking price for Elway had dropped. He said, Chris Hinton. He said, Mark Herman. And number one in next year. And, you know, I kept waiting to see what else it was, and he said, and I said, is that it? And he said, yeah, that's it. The deal was done, with the Colts GM and head coach kept out of the loop. I didn't find out about the trade until they broke into the NBA playoffs with a press conference. I called uh, Frank Cush, who was the head coach. I said, are you watching the NBA playoffs? He said, no. I said, you better put them on, because they just traded your quarterback. So that's how we found out. Baltimore acquired linemen Chris Hinton and Ron Soak, and quarterback Mark Herman none of whom came close to matching the franchise player the Colts might have had in Elway. It was nothing against the city of Baltimore or anything like that. It was just a matter of um, what I, I had to do, what I thought was best for John Elway, and that the situation of Baltimore was not uh, better than the situation I had with baseball. The situation with Denver wouldn't have happened if not for the leverage Elway had in baseball. I was actually the first guy to have a choice, to do something else. So uh, I guess that's why it was looked at, uh, you know, I became notorious in that way. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's turned out to be the right move. In the eyes of their loyal fans, the Colts made the wrong move one year later, sneaking out of town under cover of darkness and relocating to Indianapolis. Owner Bob Ursay became even more notorious than the quarterback he gave up. John Elway was the loss that a failing but once proud franchise could not survive. Look at the uh, legacy of quarterbacks that we had had. You know, we went from Unitas to Burt Jones and then to Elway. It would have been a tremendous line of succession. It would have been like the Yankee center fielders. And um, it, would have, it would have had a tremendous impact on the town and everything else. Now, whether Mr. Hersey would have still moved them, I, I couldn't predict, and only he could have answered. 